From video games to comic books and anime, Alaska's version of Comic-Con is taking over downtown Anchorage this weekend. Firefighters say a brush fire in the Jewel Lake area yesterday afternoon appears to have started in a homeless camp when someone or several people were attempting to strip insulation from copper wiring. The Los Angeles Marathon is tomorrow and there is a California man who is trying to break a course record. 32-year-old Adam Gorlitsky is attempting to become the first American paraplegic ever to walk a full marathon. Good evening. A Palmer jury has found 18-year-old Dominic Johnson guilty on all counts for the role he played in the death of 16-year-old David Grunwald two years ago. The top five musters have made it to the Bering Sea coast, and Nicholas Petit is maintaining his lead. He checked out of Shaq Tulik at 8.05 this evening. Petit is now heading to Koyuk, which is about 50 miles away. A motorcyclist is hospitalized tonight after a crash on the Glen Highway. These are live images of the scene right now. Police shut down the highway but have since reopened a single lane there. It happened just after 8 o'clock tonight when a man riding a motorcycle crashed into a small car. Travel warning for drivers tonight on the Glen Highway. Anchorage police are investigating a deadly car crash near the old Glen Highway Palmer Interchange. Police say a man is dead and it involves a car going in the ditch. Good evening. Tonight, new developments in the trade war between the United States and China as the tension continues to escalate. Today, the Chinese government officially threatened to escalate an economic standoff. It says tariffs on tens of billions of dollars of U.S. goods will happen. I think the, the saying is Alaskans don't tan. They just melt oh, through the summer. Oh, that's You go and hibernate, and the fans will all be sold out, that's for that's sure. That's true. All right, thanks, Jackie. A new study finds that Cook and Beluga whales have changed their diets in the past five decades. The study done by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game found that the whales switched from saltwater prey to fish and crustaceans influenced by fresh water. The United States and Canada reach a deal to update the North American Free Trade Agreement. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called an emergency cabinet meeting in Ottawa on NAFTA. Living in or visiting Alaska means you have to share the land with wildlife. Locals and tourists know that when they see a sign that looks like this, they need to be extra careful for the most part. But check out this video. Yesterday evening at Katmai National Park and Preserve, a local and one out-of-state visitor were anything but careful. The two entered the closed area below Brooks Falls, approaching multiple bears that were actively feeding. Now, Yankees officials postponed the game due to about six inches of snow. Now the game will be played at 4.05 p.m. on Tuesday, and uh, I'm glad we go. don't have any of that in Anchorage. Winter <laughs> again, so if you like winter, there you go. There's a nice little yeah. treat. And I've been asking Jackie if it's going to snow here <laughs> over the next month, and you've said no, but well, that could change. You know, last year we were done with the snow. It was totally gone by April 20th. Good evening. Dramatic new images of the down plane in Denali National Park. This is what it looks like right now. If you can see the wreckage is teetering at the edge of Thunder Mountain. And I'm Alexis Fernandez. Thank you for joining us for a live coverage of the 2014 Arctic Winter Games on KTVA and GCI Channel 1. Happy to be here. My first time in Fairbanks tonight. Of course, your hometown, yes, Alexis. It's very exciting to be here because I unfortunately was too young to experience the last time it was held here here in Fairbanks, which was in 1988, and before that in 1982. So it hasn't been here in 26 years. A lot of excitement you can feel in the background mm -hmm. and also in the community as well. Town Square Park is a pretty busy place, especially during the summertime. Now, they've had a lot of issues with criminal activity, partly because of this broken fountain, which people can hide behind and commit crimes. A lot of excitement down here in Homer, especially for Alaskans of Norwegian descent. Now, the king just left Homer about an hour ago back to Anchorage, but it was a very packed day with a lot of press as well as his entourage. The foundation that helped build this monument says that they are in the process of trying to move this wall to a different location, which is located right over here down this hill. It's been nearly a year since Vernicia Mosley lost her fiance, 20-year-old Davon. From the beginning, I just wanted Davon's truth to come out. Davon died after spending two weeks in segregation at the Anchorage jail. Vernicia has been fighting to get video of how he died out to the public. It didn't happen the way they said it did, and this is what really happened. This is the true Davon Mosley story. The video slides are compelling, and I need to warn everyone here, including the audience, in advance that they're disturbing. The state released images of four Alaskans who died behind bars at a joint House and Senate Judiciary Committee hearing, two of them videos. One of them shows Mosley's time in solitary confinement where he's naked. In another interaction, he's pepper sprayed and left in his cell. 
What if one of the times that he did ask for medical attention, he's seen or he got help, Devon will still be here. He eventually died from 12 ulcers. Vernicia hopes these images will bring change. No other family feels the pain that my family feels right now. The other video shows Gilbert Joseph. A DOC investigation says he was suffocated by a cellmate while officers watched and did nothing. He died hours later. DOC Interim Commissioner Walt Modigan apologized for the deaths and promised change. Good things can come out of this. I mean, out of the tragedies that we saw, uh, which obviously should never have happened. But uh, I have faith that this kind of tragic event can produce a lot of great things that will force forestall any future similar kind of events. Vernicia wants Devon to be remembered for who he was, not how he died. Devon was loving, caring. He was a big kid himself. He loved the kids. No, I'll never fuss again. For the past three days, this is all Kathleen Rennie has been looking forward to making a Cajun dish in the comfort of her own home. Um, cooking. Rennie is one of thousands of families who live on Funny River Road and had to evacuate on Sunday. I was up every hour, didn't know what to do with myself. I surprised myself. I thought I'd be a lot tougher than that. I didn't cry or nothing. I just, um, I was worried. But she says she was prepared because she's been through this before. And this is where the fire was. Several years ago, another wildfire spread close to Brown's Lake near her home. It got closer than that this time. That just reminded us all to be a little more prepared. This morning, the evacuation was lifted and she was able to return home with her husband. I feel like I'm not going to put my stuff up till I spring clean. <laughs> and that's about all I feel. Including the stuff still in her car. My maps, my photos. Um, yeah, anything precious to me is in this cargo and anything that's precious to him is on his truck. For now, she says she's just trying to enjoy the simple things in life. Tucked away in the mountains of Iceland, you'll find people enjoying nature in its purest form. It's amazing taking a nice hot bath out in the great outdoors. The country shares many similarities with Alaska, including its cold surface. But underneath Iceland, the earth is bursting with heat. The country sits on the border of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where tectonic plates are shifting. As a result, magma flows upward, creating hot water and heat. This plant here uh, produces about 50% more electricity than the city would ever need. Edgar Halmerson shows us how this geothermal energy is used at Iceland's largest power plant north of Reykjavik. So the technology is not brand new. It's more than a uh, hundred years old. The first thing you notice is the odor of hydrogen sulfide, which smells like rotten eggs. The plant works by extracting hot steam through surrounding wells. After that, the steam is cooled, then thrust through these turbine plates, creating electricity. It uh, really helps us keep uh, energy bills down in this country. Uh, but what makes this further economical is the cogeneration of heat and electricity. Geothermal supplies 30% of the country's electricity and heats 90% of its buildings city roads included. Is it much cleaner? It is much cleaner. Uh, the, uh, uh, there is CO2 in the geothermal uh, steam, but uh, it's just a fraction of uh, the CO2 emissions uh, from fossil fuels. In energy, he says other countries can tap into. What can Alaska learn from Iceland? I think the main lesson is uh, uh, keep your eyes open to uh, other ways than just uh, the conventional way of doing things. He says the end goal is less dependence on fossil fuels. The use of oil is, uh, in the long term, it is not sustainable. I think we all know that by now. But there are concerns with geothermal, like its lifespan. Try to implement uh, stations like this one in phases. So you don't have a huge investment that is going down the drain. Tourism has also taken off. It's so warm, it's like getting into a bath. 
It's just relaxing. Thanks to places like the Blue Lagoon, created by hot steam from another nearby power plant. It's a very good example of uh, the different uh, use of the geothermal energy, and uh, also a very positive one, and also in terms of employment. Last summer, we had more than 300, 300 employees. A year round, we are around 250 or 60. Another industry that sprouted, greenhouses. Here it comes in. So. Gluther Armand and his family live behind an active geyser. Of water. They use its hot water to grow tomatoes year round. By using the hot water, the heat from the ground to warm up our houses, and also to use our electricity to make sun for the plants every day of the year, because we have to do that in Iceland. We don't have so many sunny days. Which is a cherry? It's a cherry, yeah. More than 75% yeah. of tomatoes are grown in greenhouses. Oh, it's really sweet. Sweet, yeah. It saves our, our money. We don't have to be spending our money to buy tomatoes from other countries. A few examples of how Iceland is leading the way in energy independence with the help of Mother Nature. In Iceland, Alexis Fernandez, KTVA 11 News.